Hello, this is Angela with Parker's Permaculture. I'm standing in the backyard of my Portland, Oregon permaculture garden, and we are in zone 8B. Today I'm going to be pruning my hardy kiwi vines. So this is a video that I got tons of requests on, and now is the time to winter prune your kiwis. Now kiwis uh, are in the genus Actinidia. You might have Actinidia arguta, you might have Actinidia colomicta, but they are a really, really vigorous vining plant and they need pruning three times a year. I grow kiwi berries, also called hardy kiwi, which are little, that's why they're called kiwi berries. They are not fuzzy and I find they are less acidic and have a more complicated, uh, more complex and more um, delicious flavor than your big fuzzy kiwis. I wish they were something that more folks knew about and more folks enjoyed, had the opportunity to enjoy because they're really, really delicious and they're really quite easy to grow in a variety of climates. In fact, I know that they're grown in like Russia and Eastern Europe. You can grow them in the Midwest. It's not just uh, areas like the Pacific Northwest that can grow these lovely, lovely, sustainable perennial food crops. So actinidia needs to be pruned three times a year to keep it controlled, control the size of it, because like I said, it's really vigorous, to let light in so the fruit can mature, and to help promote the production of fruiting branches. So here in the winter, when it is dormant, we want to reduce the size, open up the plant, and also we want to make sure that we are maintaining those branches that will be fruiting this year. Now for most kiwis, you need a male and a female, and one male can pollinate six or more female plants. Now there are a couple of self-fertile varieties that you may be able to get your hands on, but I am a huge fan of Dumbarton Oaks. I think it is, well, it's my personal favorite, and that is the hardy kiwi that I grow. I also have a Ken's Red, um, but Dumbarton Oaks is my, my main favorite. And so it does need a male to pollinate this plant. And they are trained a little bit differently. The females, obviously, you want to make sure that you have a sufficient quantity of buds that are going to produce fruit this year. And you don't want to prune all of those off with the males because it's like kind of a one to six ratio. You can keep the males a little bit smaller. Now, right now, I am going to show you the steps that I do to prune and train my hardy kiwi. Please keep in mind that there's a little bit of do as I say and not as I do here because I am growing my kiwi up over my woodshed. For most home gardeners, training it kind of as a fan or training it flat against a fence is the ideal way to maximize food production and keep your kiwi controlled. For most folks, I would discourage you from growing it on a trellis or up over a structure. And that is because hardy kiwis can weigh two to 300 pounds when they are laden with fruit and they can pull over most trellises. For many structures, the kiwi, much like a wisteria, can kind of go up and under and through. I have uh, seen folks growing kiwi on their house and it's been a bad scene every time. Now maybe a shed like this would be a good idea for you, but for most home production, you want to grow it against a fence and train it as a fan. Hello ladies. I hear you begging over there, but I'm over here working. So first off, I want to make a little clarification here. Hardy kiwi can grow in quite cold climates, but that doesn't mean it doesn't occasionally get dieback in the winter. When I prune my kiwis, I'm always aware that I want to prune them a little bit longer than the standard, a little bit longer than the ideal length, because typically, as you can see here, I get between one and two inches of dieback if we have unusually cold, harsh winter weather. So here in late winter, I don't wanna prune my fruiting branches back too far, just in case I get dieback. So I wanna make sure that I leave a couple extra buds beyond the ideal as a buffer. So you can see I grow my actinidia here and it is kind of tangled up with my akebia vine and that's because for a lot of the year actinidia is not really that pretty and i have it and the akebia growing together and akebia is very forgiving if you hack it back a bunch and so if it's in the way of my um kiwi vine then it's not going to hurt it to cut it back too much 
Now we have a little volunteer blackberry here coming under the fence and I will need to rip that up when I've got my gloves on. I wanted to show you here the base of this female kiwi. Most folks recommend doing a central leader. I have chosen to do two and that is for the same reason as with pruning. When they are young, I want an insurance policy. I want a second leader in case this one gets damaged or is somehow um, killed back by frost. Now, look right here. Normally, you can see this is one I took off last year. The first step in pruning is any shoots coming up from the base, you wanna remove those. I had one last year, I did not have any this uh, past autumn, so I don't need to worry about taking off any suckers here down from the bottom. So I follow my leader up and I have it branching here up the back and slowly working its way up this way. Now, you can see I have all of these long lateral growths. Once I have removed any suckers from the bottom, I wanna start in taking it back. I just wanna kinda remove excess uh, foliage that's in my way, that's broken, that's too skinny. Anything that is just kinda huge and like, overarching in a way that's annoying. If it's tangled up in my neighbor's yard, you can see here, there's some that go over the fence into my neighbor's yard. I wanna get those all back and removed. So I have my main leaders here and this wood is older. You can see it gets kind of speckledy and eventually it'll get kind of like flaky looking bark as the wood ages. The newer wood is much smoother. So these older branches are going to be less productive. Off of them come these shoots. And these were uh, shoots that are one year old. And off of those will come the fruiting shoots. See, you can see here. So older wood, that this is kind of my, um, I don't have a central leader, but these are kind of my main framework pieces. Again, I have a few insurance policies. Other folks may see this and say, Angela, this is too close together. You have too many main leaders, but I wanna keep an extra one in case I have frost damage or injury to my plant. That's just my preference. And then off of there, I have the uh, wood that was one-year-old wood last year, and then it sent off these bits here, which are going to produce my fruit. And you can see what the fruiting wood looks like as opposed to the non-fruiting wood here. Fruiting, non-fruiting. But this is the wood I need to preserve because when I take it back, I don't wanna accidentally take off all these side shoots that will be fruiting. Here you can see a branch that is dead and I'm gonna take it back. When I cut it back, I don't wanna cut it too deep so you can see how it died here, that's all that brown wood. So I wanna take back any dead damaged branches, that's also dead. Like I said, we had a really significant cold snap this past winter. Actually looking at this, I think I'm gonna take the whole thing off. You ready? Okay. So here you can see all of these long laterals. Those need to be removed if they are going to be shading the foliage underneath. So you can see some of the fruiting wood down here. Directly above it is this big piece here and that will leaf out and shade the fruit so that it won't ripen properly. So all of these big laterals I'm gonna take out. Okay, so here I have an insurance branch that I no longer need. So this is my main two leaders here. And coming up here, I have let myself have a couple of extra branches. And you can see this one is big and thriving and doing really well. And this one here is skinnier. And now that I feel confident this one is bigger than the diameter of my thumb, I feel like this one is gonna continue to do well and thrive as I go up along the length of it. It's very large and it becomes all of this material up here. So I wanna keep that one and remove the skinnier one right now. So I'm gonna come in here and clip that out. 
So here you can see the collar, forgive my dirty hands, obviously I'm doing garden work. You can see the collar here where I'm going to need to make a cut. I don't wanna cut down below the base of the collar. I wanna encourage new growth and I want this to grow over and heal really nicely. So this is a lateral branch that goes out this way that is not gonna be fruiting wood, it's just shading wood. So I wanna come in here and make my cut getting a little windy so I hope there's not wind noise here but part of my goal along the side of the shed here is to encourage a number of lateral leaders from which I will get fruiting branches coming off the side. Now I would like to have these are too close together so I'm gonna try and stretch them out a little bit and you can see I've tried to train one here and then one here this one here is not doing so well. It had a lot of dead wood and it's kind of weak and spindly. So I think what I'm gonna do is take this out and then retrain this healthy, vigorous one down here instead. So if you're running one main T post and you're doing kind of a commercial style training, that's well and good. But for me, it's a better use of my space if I train flat against the side of the shed and then up and over the top a little bit. So this spindly one is gonna come out this much larger, healthier one is gonna put, uh, take its place right here and that will then become one of my main laterals. Here you can see my pile of prunings so far. A few bits of currant wood and clematis mixed in there because my kiwi was inextricably entwined with it, but pretty good quantity of wood. Some folks worry about throwing this back down as mulch and say that it can kind of sprout and volunteer. I have not found that to be the case. So I chop it up and throw it right back on my beds. All right, I think I am done pruning for now. Now I have a lot of these lateral shoots and fruit uh, bearing shoots, flowering shoots that I have left extra long. This exact day, one year ago, we had a huge snowstorm, cold weather, and I got dye back on my kiwis. I want to make sure that I am leaving extra long shoots longer than I want in case I end up having them die back before the beginning of the season. I don't want to lose all of my flowering wood, so I keep it extra long. You may choose to do differently. I would prefer to hedge my bets and be conservative in my pruning. So you can see it's a lot more cleaned up. Well, let me get back in this corner here. So I've still got a little bit of a tangle here. I think it's inevitable when you are growing hardy kiwis in the home that you are going to have a little bit of a messy, curvy, organic look to them because they are such a vigorous vine and because you are uh, working within the freedom that the vine has to express its vineness, right? And so it's gonna be a little bit more of a chaotic look. And I'm okay with that. I don't actually want it to look as neat and tidy as if I were espaliering a, you know, apple tree or something. So my future goals are here to take this lateral and train it across here and to bring another one of these branches around and have it be a low lateral here. But for now, that I will be thinking about more in the summer with my two rounds of summer pruning. But for now, I have it pruned in a way that is gonna encourage flowering and fruiting. And so that my fruiting wood is not shaded, particularly if you're going to, going to grow those red varieties of kiwi berries, they don't ripen as nicely if they are overshaded by their own foliage. Plenty of sun is really important. So I'm feeling pretty good about this right now. I'm feeling pretty happy. I have a significant quantity of fruiting wood left after taking off ones that are damaged. And I have quite a significant amount of reduction of the foliage in general so that I'm not gonna have too much shading and I'm not gonna have uh, excessive foliage that will weigh down the plant prevent fruit from ripening, and I am feeling really well set up for early spring. Again, in early spring, I'm gonna be coming in and taking some of these long fruiting pieces and some of these other laterals, I'm gonna be taking them back a little bit more, but for now, I feel pretty darn good about this. So thank you for watching today. I hope that you learned a little bit about growing and training your hardy kiwis, that you can go into pruning your kiwis this winter and then again in June and then again in August with confidence so that you can get a sustainable homegrown crop of unique, delicious, nutritious fruit year after year for your household. 
I will be back soon with more from my permaculture garden. In the meantime, you can check out my Patreon and my PayPal down in the description if you are interested in supporting this channel. Thanks.